Hey, welcome everyone to another episode of Keto Chat. I am your host, Carol Freeman, certified nutritionist. I am here today with the one, the only Dr. Warden. And uh, let me just pull up her bio because she's a pretty amazing person. Um, uh, Donise Warden, NMD, is, a, is an award-winning physician, global health educator, who expertly and compassionately bridges the worlds of conventional, allopathic, and advanced alternative medicine. As a naturopathic medical doctor, she is licensed in administering both pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals. Her passion is in helping people interpret medical science so they can take charge of their health and make informed decisions. Welcome, 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 Dr. Warden. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Where are you, where are you joining us from? I'm in Arizona right now. Arizona. And okay. uh, it, yesterday it was 112 or 13. Today's 102. So we're like loving it. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's like sweater weather there now, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> on on the, the cruise a couple of months ago, I was joking about the people on the, the cruise that were from Arizona. We could recognize them because you guys would be the ones wearing sweaters by the pool. Right. Exactly. At 70 degrees, we're literally shivering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, wonderful. I'm so excited to connect with you and ask you some questions. So, I mean, just to start with, can I just, I want to, I'm curious, what's your story of how you got into medicine? A uh, long story, but really my son at five years old was getting college credit and I'd always been interested in medicine. At that time I was working in nutrition with the, um, some uh, professional athletes and competitors. So I'd always been into nutrition um, and I knew that there was, when I found out that there was a, um, a school that allowed me to be uh, learning the traditional side alongside of the, and be licensed in the alternative, I said, that makes sense to me. As I was sitting there outside of his door at college at five years old, I said, I might as well go back to. So it's great. Wait, a five-year-old in college? Five, well, yeah. Tell me about this. Getting college credit. Yeah. He uh, was, uh, there was a program uh, for gifted children at ASU and he was enrolled into that program and uh, was taking college credits. I mean, I think oh my was gosh. Mad and was flying planes and, you know, it's a, it's a long story, but a great story. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Proud mama. Like what was it? I mean, this is a total tangent here, but I'm so curious. Like, what was it like? I mean, obviously boy genius, right? Like what was it like? Right, but he was socially adapted. You know, a lot of the kids that are that bright aren't socially, but oh man, he, he was everybody's favorite bud. My, my friends wanted to hang out with him. He was just a fun kid, loved everything, was good at everything and just super, super smart. So I wow. uh, didn't want him to be bored, but you know, we, put him back into regular school about fourth grade. He said, mom, I want to go to regular school instead of sitting outside with the heads of the departments at ASU learning physics. I mean, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And it, it's been an interesting ride with him, but um, yeah. So, so what, that's really cool. So your child inspired you to. Child inspired me to go back to school. I had my master's degree. And like I said, I was working in nutrition. I'd been in the television business. I'd done quite a few things, but my mother was the ultimate naturopath without knowing it. I mean, she okay. was having us eat yogurt and, and would read everything out there. And literally she was a naturopath with, before we knew what that was. Okay. So, did yeah. Where did you go get your naturopathic degree? In Tempe, Arizona, okay. one of the okay. four accredited schools. Actually, there's five now. We've got Canada, but one of the four accredited schools. Okay. Um, I, I'm curious then, what, you know, what's your son up to now? <laughs> He's doing quite a few things. He's actually kind of an entrepreneur and starting his own business and doing um, – um, a design, a clothesline and a logo um, in the uh, in the hemp community, which is interesting okay. because I'm sitting on the fence on that darn thing. But he's not. Uh, he he he's uh, likes the the health properties of it. So yeah, cool. Well, I'm I'm sure he's just uh, you know he's got a mind of doing a bunch of different things, and and I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes, he's yep. He's enjoying that right now. We'll see what he jumps to next. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, indulging me on in, uh, that sure. cur curiosity too. So, um, yeah. Well, okay. So you got you got into medicine that way, and then what was it? You know, what was the the journey like of getting your degree, and then you know, did you quickly have a specialty or passion as you went through school? Like, 
Yeah, my passion has always been health. People say, what's your specialty? And I say health. So, um, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I don't care if a patient's coming in for heart disease or diabetes or cancer or whatever it is. It's individualized medicine. Look yeah. at that patient. Look at their mind, body, soul. Look at their physical. Figure out what they need and be a good diagnostician. Okay. So, you know, it's not about the disease. It's not about what they have. It's about what they need. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like, I mean, my understanding too of naturopathic medicine is what is the underlying root of this and how can we address it and, and help the body heal itself? Right, exactly. Trying to find the root of the problem, you know, first of all, what's really yeah. causing those symptoms. And then, you know, I, I will say that many of, uh, you know, the natural practitioners tend to do the same thing as the allopaths. So instead of giving them a drug, they're going to give them a whole bunch of nutraceuticals or things to do and covering up symptoms, even though there's less side effects and it may be more natural, you're still not getting to the root of the problem. Of why are they having to take that supplement yeah. or why that drug? I want to know why they have those symptoms. And that diagnostic pieces uh, you have to spend some time on it okay well and so you know along those lines then what what kind of tests are you running routinely for people to kind of look for those things well it depends on what their symptoms are and who they are you know there's uh, some unique tests along the line of ketogenic you know I know we're talking about that today and and maybe let me back up just a little bit and say how I kind of got started into that yeah um, so I work I design and conduct some clinical research with some major institutions so I've been in the research side of this as well and um, oncology kept coming at me and you know how could it not when about one in two people are going to have it my patients and and bringing them in and I said I don't want to specialize in this well it kept coming and kept coming. And sometimes you hear the door knock and say, okay, started looking into what are the therapies and what are the, the metabolic cancer theory made sense to me. So like Dr. Uh, Thomas Seafried's book, Metabolic Cancer and uh, Travis Christofferson's book with Tripping Over the Truth. Started reading that years ago and said, okay, this makes sense to me, whether we're talking about weight loss diabetes, neurological disease, or cancer. doesn't matter. Again, it's about what does that patient need and that body need. So I immediately uh, latched myself into uh, Travis Christofferson and said, okay, I want to meet Dr. Coe with three bromopyruvate, Dr. Seafree, Dominic D'Agostino. And so Travis was kind of my guy that introduced me to everybody. And now all of those are my colleagues and friends. I can call them my friends. Mm. And I'm on a, a continual basis in with all of those in talking to them about their research and what they have going on and how they can, you know, how I can help them either with the message or collaboration to bring all of this forward. So um, back to your question about what kinds of tests, um, it really does depend on what the patient's coming in. I'm not about let's spend thousands of dollars on everybody. If they have that expendable income. I've got all kinds of things we can look at, but I want to look at them as they appropriately need. Some interesting ones, I think that I run more often now, whether again, kind of cancer, weight loss, neurological, if we're on that metabolic or ketogenic deal, is looking at the MTHFR gene, the methylation mm -hmm. gene, that makes a big uh, difference. If we have that, it needs to be addressed. Looking at leptin, which is a hormone that tells the body to store fat or don't store fat. Some of the people that are doing keto ketogenic diets are doing everything right. They're not really stressing out to dump the sugar. There, there's no other reason. I'll look and I'll see that leptin gene. So that needs to be addressed too. And that explains some things. Uh, APOE, looking at that, the genetic side of them, uh, trying to see genetically what's their pattern, you know, their, their ratio of natural genetic ratio of carb versus protein, this and of that. That way we can tweak just a little bit on whatever diet that they're doing. See what else? Micronutrient testing, uh, mm -hmm. looking at the white blood cells to see um, it, are there any deficiencies in amino acids, proteins, uh, uh, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, looking for true deficiencies. Not what's floating in the blood, but what's not getting inside those white blood cells. Um, let's see, lipid profiles, and it's not just looking at their cholesterol. We want to break down the different cholesterols. Some are addressed by niacin only, mm. right? And so looking at their lipids, looking at their diabetic uh, patterns, their insulin, not just glucose, but really looking at their insulin sensitivity, uh, those kinds of things. So, you know, I look at the patient in front of me. What do they really need? What do I think they need at this moment? Where are they struggling? So those are just a few. I do a lot of hormone testing 
if hormones, and Carolyn, you know this, their hormones are, are imbalanced. It's be very difficult for, especially weight loss, um, for them to make some changes. We need to balance those hormones. Um, a new, the, the microbiome, you know, being a naturopath, we've always said health begins in the gut. You have to address that microflora. You must, uh, that affects everything from the immune system to neurotransmitters to all of it. So look very uh, heavily there. If they have up some symptoms that I look for and it looks like they're toxic, I'm going to look for heavy metals. I'm going to do urine challenges and see, do they have toxins and solvents and those kinds of things on board? Because if they're high in those, the body won't let go of that fat. It won't let go of that last little bit because it's self-protective. The body knows that it's storing those toxins in that fat. Hmm. So it's not going to let go and let, until you get rid of those toxins. So hmm. those are a few. Okay, just a few, just a tip of the iceberg, yeah. Well, it sounds like you really enjoy the, the puzzle of figuring yeah. out, like looking at all this together as a whole picture and not just... I like the diagnosis. One thing means this and the one thing means that. That's right. Together. A lot of little rabbit trails and I really like that. You know, Carol, one I didn't mention, um, that, that li the liver. And that's big. Non-alcoholic fatty liver a disease is going to be, it's climbing faster than heart disease and cancer right now. And I'm seeing healthy patients um, that have fatty liver disease. And I uh, did a clinical, kind of a, I'll say an in-house uh, clinical. I had a device called a, a fibro scan. And besides biopsy, that is the way to look at, um, does the patient have a fatty liver? Is it fibrotic, which is kind of scarring? Mm -hmm. And is it turned into cirrhosis, which is really in trouble? So I had that and it was surprising. I put many, many patients through, young, fit, healthy, no reason to think they had liver issues. And they did and um, found a homeopathic injection that's amazing, that is reversing and, trans, uh, and pushing that cirrhosis and fibrosis back to normal levels in a quick time. Wow. So we're going to be publishing that, working on that. But that right there, when we're talking about weight loss, we're talking about ketosis. I think that's a missed piece. I yeah. think we're forgetting yeah. to look at that liver because some patients, until I address that liver, we couldn't get where we needed to go. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is a big piece of it too. And myself, I've only helped people with, you know, I'm a nutritionist. I can't do all the stuff that you That's do. a huge do, piece. We'll do things like, you know, a, a you know, warm, warm compress, or if they're willing to go so far as a, you know, a castor oil pack, which most people yeah. are like, ah, oh, that's too far. Like <laughs> something like that simple, but uh, nope. yeah, it, it really can be um, important to address to get optimal results. That's right. Yeah. And people yeah. say, no, I, I, my liver's fine. My my doctor said it was fine. Well, liver enzymes on a blood test is the only way we really look at it you know, just generally, but until the liver's in trouble, it won't show those outside of normal range. And once they're outside of normal range, you've lost about 50% of your function. That's a little late. Yeah. So the way we're looking at it is before it gets to that point, or we're finding it when they're in trouble and um, amazing that something natural can start helping them. And so is it, is it kind of an ultrasound type machine that you can... The, the fibro scan is a shear wave and it's, it's, it's been trialed clinic, well, over 2,000 studies, clinically trialed right next to um, biopsies, Mayo, most Mayos have it, Johns Hopkins, major institutions, but they're using it pretty much for looking at what pharmaceuticals are being developed for this liver issue that we're seeing progressing in our uh, populations. So they're using it because you can't do a biopsy on somebody all the yeah. time, right? Yeah. So, but for me, I was looking at it in the wellness space. What can we do? What can we find? And what can we do right now with diet and lifestyle? By the way, ketogenic diet started moving those markers in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as fast as the injectables, these homeopathic okay. injectables, but it was moving it in the right direction. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I'm so glad you're sharing this too, because so many of the people that I talk to will say, oh, I'm healthy, but I just want to lose weight. And right. It's things like that, these, the scan that can actually show people that you're not as healthy as you think you are. That's right. That's right. And, and maybe that weight is not coming off the way that it used to or the way that it should. They think they're doing everything right and it's not coming off. Another simple test that I do a lot of for almost 
everyone that comes in is um, food sensitivity testing. Now it okay. is it is controversial because we're not saying it's a food allergy. It's foods that cause inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say in my practice for uh, thousands of patients, this has been one of the most beneficial tests that I run. Take the patient's blood, look at what foods cause inflammation because they can go on a ketogenic diet. But if some of those foods are high sensitivities for them and they're causing inflammation, that's why it can't work like it's supposed to. Hmm. So that's, that's a test I do um, on almost, almost every patient. Okay. What we put in every day, as you know, being a nutritionist, very important. We know the macros, the micro, we know the nutrition that needs needed. But a broccoli, if that's causing inflammation in you, that's no longer healthy. Yeah, yeah. So and it's a very important test to do. And, I, and so I just want to clar clarify, so the pr it sounds like the primary groups that you're working with a ketogenic diet on are cancer and then weight loss or metabolic? Uh, metabolic diabetes, um, yeah, all of it. Or just people that say, I'm ready to try something new. You know, and the body kind of likes a shake up once in a while. It does. Mm -hmm. um, so when they're ready or they've heard about the ketogenic and they just want to try it, and I've worked with professional athletes, they want to try it. They want more energy. They want their brain to find Function better. Mm -hmm. Or I have uh, uh, patients that are concerned, they've got family history and the genetics when I run it for Alzheimer's, for dementia. So why not start working on that right now? Yeah. Start preventing it before those neurofibrillary tangles start, start uh, wrapping around. Nice. So you mentioned that, you know, one of the big obstacles people have to losing weight is their liver function, the um, food allergy testing. So what are some other things that, you know, the biggest obstacles you see to people getting, you know, the weight loss that they want on a keto diet? Stress. And you know this, being a, doing your hypnosis and I listen, it's fantastic. It's a big piece because you can be perfect on your ketogenic diet. You can have your keto mojo, whatever you're doing to test. You can look at these things and say, why am I not getting there? But when there is stress, the body is going to be dumping sugar. It's going to dump glucose. It's, we're never completely out of sugar. We can't be. Mm -hmm. So the body will find it. It will dump it when they're under stress. And therefore, they're going to have a struggle getting into, keto, into ketosis. So I do a lot with the mind-body. Uh, my husband uh, works with uh, like Dr. Joe Dispenza and Greg Braden and Neil Donald Walsh, people, and Anita Morjani, people that are teaching meditation, people that are teaching these things about stress reduction. And that's a huge piece left out of medicine. And so for me, that's always a piece, no matter what they're coming in for. But uh, I think we really, really have to address that more because mm. the body's going to dump that glucose one way or another, especially yeah. if we're in stress. Yeah. And how about sleep? I'm sure you're, you're working a lot on that very, too. Very, very much. And that's part of that stress. It's usually yeah. busy mind or their hormones. You know, their hormones mm. can be, uh, there's cortisols reversed uh, their AM and PM, which is a hormone. You have to look at the hormones. You have to look at the reason why they're not uh, sleeping. If it's busy mind, they can't shut it off. We do really well with music, certain types of music uh, that has frequencies in it that can, that brain waves can match or entrain and just calm that brain wave down and get them to sleep. I love that. They're not taking a pill. They're listening to a certain type of music right and get them to sleep. If they're waking up during the night, we've got to see, is it having to use the restroom? Is it you know, what's the problem? And one that's kind of interesting is people say, well, I wake up at night. I don't sleep through the night. And I said, well, what time are you waking up? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've addressed those uh, Chinese medicine circles and times on your, on, your, on your shows, but if they're between one and three or three and four, it really depends on their liver. It depends on their lung channels. And in that case, I find it to be more emotional. If they have unresolved anger or grief, they're going to be waking up during those times during the night, no matter how many sleep aids and how much they take, our body's strong and it's going to break through any medicine or melatonin or anything because that subconscious is still stirring. I'm still mad about, or I'm still grieving about. So what's, we have to work on that during their waking hours. What's the, uh, what's the, uh, I'm, so I tend to see the three o'clock wakening, which is the yeah. liver. 
from what and I the, understand. Well, it's on the cusp of liver and, and lung. So it's kind of the grief anger, which comes together a lot. Oh, and most okay. people, most patients, when you talk to them and you just say, listen, if you'd have told me the time is anywhere between 11 and five, it's random, it comes and goes, that's probably how much water they drank, dehydration, all that. But when they give me an exact time, I say, there's no other explanation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could get into cortisol, this and that, but it wouldn't be that exact. So right. as soon as you just bring it up and I say, well, we have to have this conversation. I just show them the clock and point to it. Most start crying or saying, I know exactly what it is. And I said, okay, you've been stuffing it during your day. You're still mad. You're still upset about it during your sleep and you're not going to sleep until you deal with it during your day Yeah, and let it go. Learn how to let it go. So is the so is the lung kind of um, in Chinese medicine? Uh, lung is grief. Gr oh, grief. Okay, lung is lung is grief and liver is anger. Okay. Ah. Okay. Cool. Thousands of years that's been around, and you know what? It still proves through today. So. Well, and, and I don't. Uh, you know, I went to a school that taught you know Chinese medicine. I didn't really get into it. It was always one of those things where I'd go get an acupuncture session, and they'd say, <laughs> like you know, oh, does this hurt, right? After what I told them was going on, I'm like, how would you know that that part hurts on me? And it's like, I don't know how it works. And then yeah. I taught uh, nutrition classes actually at a school in Portland where yeah. it was integrated certification in both nutrition and Chinese nutrition. Perfect. Chinese nutrition. Yeah. And so it was really cool sitting in on the classes as my co-teacher was teaching them about pulse and tongue diagnosis and right. when I kind of sit in a supervised clinic which again it's like logically in our western trained mind right. that's just hooey you know yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's just you know woo woo stuff that doesn't really yeah. work but I would listen with my western trained ears about the the complaints that the person was having and I would say well that's this and this and then the uh then we'd compare at the end the other instructor that was doing it from the Chinese perspective yeah. and she would say did their tongue look like this? Did they look at this? And they say, yes. And so I was like, all right, I don't know how it works, but obviously it works. So, <laughs> Well, we're starting to know a little bit more. There are different pathways. Uh, there, there are some things in the human body that are so fast. You can't explain it by the nervous system. It's too fast. We're calling it the living matrix. We know that those pathways, those meridians that the Chinese medicine has taught us for thousands of years, um, there is a different communication system in the body. That's one of my favorite lectures. Some we know quite a bit about. Uh, we're learning more about frequency medicine and others we don't. But um, an interesting study that you'll find for those that are still saying, I'm still on the fence about all that. Yeah. yeah I love this one is that um, the powers that be said, okay, if acupuncture works, tell us with vision where you would put a needle. And so an acupuncturist said it would be in the bladder meridian and it'd be on the foot. Now that's about as far away from the brain as you can get, right? So which that's where in the back, the occiput in the back of the head, that's where the vision area is for the body and the brain. So the powers that be said, it, so you're telling me stick a needle in the foot and it's, it should light up in the proper cortices of the brain. Mm. Well, it did. Mm -hmm. As soon as they put the needle, it lit it up. But then what's interesting is what was faster than the acupuncture needle was light, like with cold lasers, and I use lasers a lot in those acupuncture meridians or on those spots. Light was faster, and then what was even faster was sound, mm. sonopuncture. So that's the oh, music. Yeah. Side. So okay. I love all of this frequency, and we're, you know, the ketogenic metabolic guys are kind of, they like that because they kind of get it that, you know, we don't need to st stay in these same patterns of diets and exercise and lifestyle that we have. There's a lot more to us, and, um, uh, they're a lot more open. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. And all that stuff is like, we have a thousand different topics we could talk about on. That's future. Right. That's right. Um, all right. So kind of switching gears or totally switching gears is, is I, you know, what about exercise on a ketogenic diet? Right. Again, I think it's individualized. What does that patient need? Just like with cancer patients, we know if they were couch potatoes, they need to get up and move. That's what will make a difference. If they were extreme athletes, they need to calm it down because we're creating too many free radicals, right? You have to take that patient where they're at, what they're willing to do, and look at it. Yes, burning, I mean, do the ratio of how, many, how much they're eating and how many uh, calories that they're burning, but you know, I think it's far beyond that at this point. They've got to be willing to do it, and we've got to say, what is the best for them? If they're, if they're the stress ball that loves to do 
over exercise, over overdo everything, and they think more is better. The hardest thing for them to say, go do a yoga class. Yeah. And see if you can quiet your brain. And then they say, can I do hot yoga? Right. (laughs) Right. And then they say hot yoga. And I go, no, your adrenal glands are done. They're fried. They're saying, stop running from that bear. Stop it. Now, let's get the body in tune. You can do strength training. Those poses are tough. And I tell them, you want to see the toughest exercise out there. You get into the, the, the yoga, the advanced yoga classes. That's tough. So it's, but what do they want to do? They want to jump in and get on that treadmill hundred miles an hour. Yeah. And so I really have to look at what do they need? What are they used to? And really it's a behavior change, just mm-hmm. like when you change your nutrition, you have to change that, that exercise routine. I'm a big fan of interval training, short periods. When you're where you want to be, you don't have to do that much, but you know, we know that those short periods are better than an hour on the treadmill. We know that interval pushing, you know, fast, the fast, slow, fast, slow is very good for most people. And even people that are out of shape, they can get on a bike and start a little bit of uh, interval training. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of that and yoga. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, all right. So then another commonly asked uh, question on keto is what about supplements? What do I, do, what do I need? <laughs> do I need a thousand supplements? Right, right. I'm never a fan of a thousand supplements. There are basics that everybody needs. And, you know, those of us that have been working with keto for a while, we know that at the beginning, before we know what you know now, what you're putting people on through your program and watching all of this, but a lot of them are doing it on their own and they're getting leg cramps. They're getting all these things. They're mineral deficient because they're not getting enough vegetables. You know, they're, they're, they're following this pattern, but they're not quite getting it. So I, I do, most people that are on a, um, on a ketogenic diet, I'll put them on a multivitamin mineral, especially the minerals. That's the piece. Um, it's tough on keto to, to, to do that. You can do it, but you have to really know what you're doing. So minerals, um, uh, fish oil, omega-3s, um, good ones that we know get absorbed, uh, probiotic for that microflora. And then the rest, honestly, would be that individual patient. What do they need? Do they have inflammation going on? While we're trying to figure out why they have the inflammation, is it a food they're putting in? Is it a medication? Is it something else? Is it a toxin? Why do they have that? They need to be on an anti-inflammatory mm-hmm. uh, because now they're putting themselves at risk because we can um, cause a little bit thick, sticky blood. Enzymes are a big piece of what I use, uh, both digestive and systemic enzymes. So many times I'll use enzymes uh, with ketogenic uh, diet. Uh, but the basic, if I could only give them one thing, it'd probably be minerals. Mm, okay. So, you know, speaking of supplement, you have a pretty robust um, line yourself. Tell us about your, um, the new line you've developed. I don't know much about it. So tell me about your, your supplement. Well, well, I've helped many uh, companies and others develop lines and done formulations. Some, I, and most I can't talk about because I, okay. I'm the behind the scenes that help them put together their line. Okay. Well, because I work in the industry and I know the manufacturers, I know the raw materials, I'll say 98%. Uh, my guess and estimation is 98% of what's on the shelf out there is inferior quality at best. Yeah. And at worst. So, um, and I've got 400 different products and I'm not loyal to one company. I want the best product for what I'm looking at. Okay. So it's not just about price, right? It's about, I make sure I've got a certificate of analysis of anything that's on my shelf. That's my responsibility. Yeah. If I'm using this as medicine, I want to make sure it has in it what it says it has. And just as important is it doesn't have the toxins in it mm-hmm. that we continually see in raw materials and just saying, Oh, I've got a good company and I check them once in a while is not good enough. The next batch of raw material that comes in could be absolutely tainted. You have to look at every batch. I spend a lot of time um, really analyzing anything that I use in my practice. So, um, you know, I do, I've got my, I've got a private label on a couple of products just from a company that I truly trust. Mm-hmm. But, um, there's a lot of, there, there's some good physician lines and other lines out there that are good, but even the physician lines, I, you have to, you have to watch because they don't know. Physicians aren't asking these questions. 
Mm -hmm. I'm out there training them, trying to with my continuing medical education uh, lectures and saying it's your responsibility if you're using this in your practice that you need to make sure that the quality is what it should be for the, your patients. Oh, that's, that is fantastic. And most people, gosh, just talking to somebody yesterday about this, how people have the misconception in our country. I mean, it's good and bad that we can get access to supplements very easily, but it's also bad because most people then think supplements are just harmless at, at worst. They're harmless. And so I can just take as many as I want. Yeah. yeah. And I tell patients, I'd rather you be on nothing than on an inferior quality product. Nothing. You should be getting as much as you can from your food. What you can't, that's what we need to substitute. Or we're using a supplement for a symptom or helping the adrenals, some, whatever we need to do in that moment until you're getting your lifestyle where you don't have to take all these things. But uh, no, it's a, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, uh, it's too bad. But you know, it's regulated as a food, Carol. It's not regulated as pharmaceutical. Now, homeopathy, on the other hand, homeopathics are regulated like pharmaceuticals, mm. much more uh, stringent in getting those regulated. And those are regulated as drugs, homeopathy, but not nutraceuticals. Well, at least so, food, food has some uh, quality standard testing where supplements I've just learned in the last year is they don't even have to uh, there's no testing up front, first of all, that this formulation together is safe or yeah. what is even in the product is on the label. No, no. And so that's where, you know, my clinical training of four years of botanical medicine on top of the pharmaceuticals, at least I can know which ones did we know the mechanism of action? Mm -hmm. Can they be synergistic or are they working against each other or harmful? I mean, we know some to be able to look at both sides of the fence. Or like you said, even taking two supplements, are they synergistic or are they counteracting one another? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have probably, I, I know naturopaths have more training in that than anybody as far as, far as, as far as physicians are concerned. But even us, you know, there's a lot, we don't know the mechanism of action. In fact, pharmaceuticals, if I take out the prescription pad and write it, about 80% of the drugs, we don't know the mechanism of action. We know it helps with that symptom, but we don't know how it worked. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. How do we know how they work with one another? We have to wait till somebody's hurt or somebody dies to mm. say, oops, don't put those two together again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In this world of people taking more and more and more medicines and... It's more is not better with, nu with, with nutraceuticals either. I tell yeah. patients, it's not, more is not the game. It's what do you really need? Yeah. And yeah. eat, get it from your foods as much as you can, closest to nature. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I love it all. Uh, um, so I also want to ask you then about, um, you know, what, what's, what's, uh, well, you're kind of you're kind of famous, aren't you? Like uh, you're out there in the world on TV shows and things like that. And I don't know what that word famous, you know, in a goldfish bowl, maybe few people <laughs> know. But uh, no, I love I love lecturing and I love educating. I do, and I'm doing more of it. Um, I my practice has been full bolt, very hard steam for a long time. I'm shrinking it down. I'm seeing less patients, so I can do more education. I can help more people. Yeah, education yeah. and help more physicians even by educating. So I'm I'm doing more on the education end now. Okay, uh, what kind I'm of channels? I love it. What kind of you know channels outlets do you have for your education? Oh well, there's a few in the making right now. I did sign with PBS for a television talk show, Health Hot Seat, where I'm in the middle. Okay. And there's a traditional medical doctor on one side and an alternative medicine on the other, and I'm kind of in the middle, yeah. putting them both to the question of saying, don't just say go buy CoQ10. You better be telling them about the quality and where's your science. Don't say you have it if you don't. I'm okay if you don't have it. Just tell me you don't have it. And on the other side, it was saying, you're telling me you won't even look at anything until it has a double blind placebo controlled study behind it. And even though it's got thousands of years of use. So the public needs to hear both sides at once. They really do. And there's weaknesses and strengths on both sides. So that's one piece. I do have a uh, once a month on own times. Um, it's, uh, it's the truth in medicine. I co-host that with Sandy Sedgebeer. Uh, the other three, she's doing her hosting with the, all the metaphysical world that she does, but they brought me in on that. And we've interviewed, you know, we've had, a, uh, 
several of the metabolic um, keto guys on there. So those are good interviews. Um, Regina Meredith has her own network now and she does a good job interviewing. I'm on there quite a bit with her. And I have some interviews on Guy MTV that are still out there that I think are beneficial for people uh, thinking about metabolic and, and the cancer world, even though there's a lot more information I know now than I did then. Um, but I've got some other things in the works too, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> Very and cool. Think, yeah. Doing a podcast like yours, yeah. you know, it's about reaching the right the right people at the right time. It's not about just massive as big as you can get in my world. Yeah, yeah. You want to you want those ears that are open and ready to hear the message. That's just... right. That's right. That's right. Um, not, don't have enough time to try to convince those that don't want to hear. I did that for years. Mm. They'd say, well, there's no research. And I'd bring them stacks and say, here it is. And so I don't have time to read it. Then why are you wasting my time? So th there's plenty that want to learn, that mm. are anxious to learn more than I have time to work with. You know, they fly out, they see me. To get, so there's plenty. I just don't have time for the other guys anymore. I, yeah. I yeah. That's, that's one of the joys of keto right now is that we let yep. every, everybody else do the the uh, information. Yeah, yeah. We're, yep. we're, we're, we're here, so. That's right, that's right. And, you know, once they experience it, that's it. You, you know, right. you, they right. don't care what else we've got. But I will say that Dominic, you know, Dr. D'Agostino, I mean, the research that's still coming out of there, Dr. Seafried, it's amazing. So Dr. Seafried and uh, Dominic D'Agostino and Travis and I and Dr. Robert Elliott, which I want to tell you about in a minute, uh, we get on once a month and we have a call between us and my, my my real role is just to say how can they collaborate with one another to bring all of this research forward faster um, into the major institutions or at least bridging it as best as we can so that's exciting to hear those um, those researchers and 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 oncologists in, in uh, Dr. Elliott's um, position it's amazing what they have going on, what's going on in the labs and to hear it before it's out there. And it's just exciting because as the type of physician I am, I can try some of those things before it becomes standard of care because my license allows me to do natural therapies. Mm. If I was an MD only, I wouldn't even be able to touch it. Mm. So it's exciting to be able to, to, to get to, to, to look at these things and, and start trying these with patients. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. You, you are very, you're a very privileged, privileged doctor that you get I, to do. <laughs> I am. I feel very honored to, to listen to that discussion and that collaboration going on with them. Um, they are, they're amazing. And um, I'm just uh, tickled pink, as we would say in the South. <laughs> Wait, are you from, are you from the South originally? Here in Louisiana, but I've been in Arizona longer than anywhere, but Louisiana is still hanging around a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Right. Let, me, let me tell you a little bit about what to, Dr. Robert Elliott has going on. I want people to know this. Um, okay. He's kind of quiet. Uh, nobody in, in the keto world uh, knows yet. I mean, the researchers do, but I want your listeners to know. Um, Dr. Elliott has been a fan and been utilizing the ketogenic diet in his oncology patients for a long time now. He believed in the metabolic theory of cancer and he knew about it because for 60 years, he's been, he's a breast cancer surgeon. Uh, he does other types of cancers now, but started there. And he would take that pathological slide out as uh, uh, pieces out of the tumor and study it under a microscope. PCR, he is a researcher and he's got an amazing lab right now. They are studying and he saw what was happening to the mitochondria. Now he's, uh, he's, he's produced many clinical uh, publications and research on the mitochondria inside the cell. He was the first one to transplant mitochondria from one cell to another when everybody said it couldn't be done. He's the one that taught us and showed us that iron feeds cancer. If you have high iron, you need to get that out. Mm -hmm. It feeds cancer. He's the one that has um, prostate and breast cancer vaccines. He's working with MS. He's working with other neurological diseases. So he's a big fan of the metabolic uh, way of working with cancer um, and the immune system, but he's also teaching us and teaching uh, all of us now, there's a timing, there's a time and a place for an antioxidant and your immune system changes from the moment you don't know you have cancer to the moment you do until there's a treatment, until after that treatment. We shouldn't just load everybody with everything all the way through. 
wrong thing to do. So he, it, we're, we're working together to come up with these timing protocols. Whatever you're deciding to do, chemo, radiation, ketogenic, whatever you're doing, the, um, the uh, vaccines, there's a time and a place around that what you should be doing to help that immune system. So that's exciting. And um, I, I, I can't wait for you to learn more about that. He also has taught us that antibiotics destroys the mitochondria inside the cell. Now we knew it was bad for us. We knew it caused the things that it does, the thrush, the, you know, this. We didn't know for sure that it was killing the mitochondria. He is putting his papers together on that. He already has one paper out and showing that. And he's got some other discoveries I can't quite talk about yet, but um, Dr. Elliot is, is amazing and it's good to hear him. Uh, with uh, the metabolic cancer group because they 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 all know what they see and that we have to address that metabolic piece and that ketogenic is a big way to do it. I will say that he takes people off the ketogenic diet a few weeks before the vaccines. There's a reason that he does it because of the immune system. They don't put it back on. Hmm. So it's not not everything all the way through, which is interesting. Hmm. I just thought of another uh, a bonus question here. Okay. Who is not a good fit for a ketogenic diet? You know, I haven't fet, met somebody yet, even those that are insulin dependent diabetics. Now you've got to be under a physician's care and do it. And I've done it. And um, when the study started showing that it was reversing, you know, the pancreatic islet cells, it was like, good grief. We don't need to be afraid, but you've got to be very careful in doing it. So, you know, um, people without a gallbladder, give them ox bile. There's a way to help them break that fat down. Yes. So, I haven't, you know, some people are more of a struggle with it. Uh, and you have to know what you're dealing with. If their liver is an issue, that has to be addressed. And I think that in the keto community, we haven't been looking at that close enough. Um, we're not uh, we should be looking at that and helping that a lo lot more than we are. So uh, my opinion, I don't know anybody that it wouldn't be helpful for, but we may have to adjust it according to that person's pathology and what's going on with that patient. Cool. Nice. Now one group I found though, that is a little, maybe not ideal for a keto, at least, at least the popular way of keto being done is, is yeah. women who are already very lean. Yeah. And they are, they're trying to be even leaner or they're trying to, you know, have a six pack and they're exercising yeah. seven hours a day. Yeah. Um, yeah. May, may, I mean, maybe keto in a certain way might be. I, I agree, but I think your ratios do need to be changed there. I do. I mean, they may need a little more protein than we normally would. Maybe we don't throw them as deep into ketosis as we normally would when we have pathology. We have cancer. We have, you know, a disease going on, Alzheimer's. We've got to be in ketosis to get there. But these women, I agree, they don't need to be um, thrown in as far, in my opinion. And I, I find they need to make sure they're eating adequate calories too. Uh, they, they don't want to, yeah. and that's a problem. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, and I tell them the story of, in a lot, uh, probably 30 years ago, we were working um, in nutrition. Uh, I was a, a, a trainer, a sports trainer and this and that. And we noticed we had this group of aerobics instructors and that day, every gym, it was all about aerobics yeah. and they were eating nothing and teaching eight hours in a row of aerobics classes and they could not lose weight. Well, you know what, and low fat diet. We, mm -hmm. You know what the problem was, they needed the calories to be able to burn the calories where they needed to and be able to put on that, pr produce that muscle. So I bring out that story quite often. Uh, it's about balance in the body. And when the body feels balanced and is balanced, it's gonna do what it needs to do. And if you're taking it somewhere that's not healthy for the body, it's going to fight you. So if you want to be super, super skinny and lean, you want your body fat down to 2% and you don't want your periods and all that, do it and compete, do whatever you're doing. But if you want to be healthy, you need to get back to balance. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 Uh, so I, I hear you got a book coming out. What's I do. Um, I've got to finish it, but we're, 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 we're getting, I, I, we, my literary agents after me to, to finish it, but it's more about the mindset when you find out that you have cancer, uh, mm -hmm. what to do in that moment. Uh, too many times I have a patient sit in front of me and say, if I'd known then what I know now would have made different choices. But more importantly, they're coming to me and they're saying, my doctor just called and said, I have cancer. I haven't seen anybody else. I want to know what you think. And so I'm, I'm teaching them how to think through the process 
process, how to make the decisions. It's not about what to make. I'm not trying to talk them out of one system over another, because again, strengths and weaknesses on both sides. It's about their belief system. What do they believe is going to help them and cure them? I believe that's the best. And yes, we need to know the stats. We need to know what we don't know and don't make promises where we shouldn't. Uh, but um, they need to know all the information so they can make an informed decision. And um, again, my take is I'm not going to judge you if you decide to do radiation and chemo. I'm going to, as long as you've got the education and you understand what that means and what it means long-term, then, then I'm okay. I'm writing this with you and helping you make your decisions through it. Yeah. So I think that everything is that nothing should really become a job or food or exercise. We need to be conscious about it and mm -hmm. saying, is it bringing me peace and joy and energy? Is it, is it nurturing me or is it wearing me out trying to be too healthy? Yeah. And, um, and with cancer, uh, the same, uh, what is going to give the most, uh, informed, uh, peace, uh, that, that we can get, but informed, um, you know, I, I, I love that I'm a member of the Society of Integrative Oncology, and this year they actually didn't award me just a lecture, but a workshop, and this is on these homeopathic injections for the liver that I'm talking about, and I, mm. I didn't think in a million years that I'd be talking about homeopathy in some of these groups, but uh, pain management, I'm a diplomate in pain management. It wasn't too many years ago they let me lecture on uh, injections, homeopathic injections for pain, so we need to quit saying them versus us. We need to be saying who's ready to hear the message. Here we are, here's the science of what we do know and what we don't know, and now let's work together. And I have many integrative oncologists that work with me at MD Anderson and other, others that are in the standard of care, but they're willing to let me use cold laser on radiation burns, willing to let me do alpha lipoic acid so we don't go into neuropathy, all of this. And one more thing, I know we're getting close, um, MCP modified citrus pectin. Maybe that's a different show, but everybody needs to be looking into that. We know now the mechanism, it blocks collectin three. It works on preventing and actually helping people with cancers, many different types, over 8,000 studies right now. It went from dish to the mice, to the humans. And the more we find out, the better it gets. Working on Alzheimer's, working on obesity, on diabetes, on autoimmune, uh, heavy metals. I could go on and on because that galactin-3 is higher up in the pathway. And when you block that, you block a lot of bad guys. So I'm really excited about MCP and have been telling everybody about that. Oh, one more, one more clinical, a, a good little thing, a good little plug. Coffee is, can be, can be the highest antioxidant out there, higher hmm. than kale if it's processed correctly. So I want everybody to look into, and it's just a plug for them, and that's okay, I don't have any affiliation, but, they got, but Purity Coffee. Purity, not only do they make sure they've got grade A beads, beans so that they're not cut, you know, they're not broken so they lost their antioxidants, they take each batch, they test it, they figure out how to roast it to keep the antioxidant status as high as they can. Now that's pretty cool. It's not just organic, not just grade A, not just they have zero molds and toxins in it, mycotoxins, zero, not the amount you're allowed. But I love that they are saying, how do we make it the highest antioxidant? Hmm. And on keto, most of us, man, we, we, we like our coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait, oh, oh, I already put my cup in the dishwasher. So. Yeah, try purity. It yeah. tastes good. You're going to love it. But I love that um, they literally test it for the antioxidant activity. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was, I was going to ask if there was anything else you were wanting to share. It sounds like you kind of, you know, any, yeah, anything those are, else? Or, okay. Those are little pieces, but I thought those are important for your listeners. Um, yeah. I do like that, that purity coffee, um, just because they consider themselves a health company, not a you know, not a coffee company. Yeah. Um, look oh, into Dr. Gosh. Robert, Dr. Elliot and the mm -hmm. vaccines that he has and the work that he's doing. Be watching for him and keep following Dominic and Dr. Seafried and, and Travis with the care oncology. Keep following those guys. They're, they're yeah. doing amazing things. Yeah. Excellent. Well, oh my gosh, you're a wealth of information. Um, I just love your passion uh, what you're doing. And uh, I'm, I, I just know that your patients are getting phenomenal results because they have somebody that truly cares about, you know, giving them the optimal health and solving that health puzzle that they've got going on. And yeah, um, I've got, I've got one closing question for you. Sure. 
Uh, <laughs> it's, it's your final day on the planet. The meteor's coming at us. We're all going out today. Mm. Especially, you know, the meteors are going to go to Arizona first. That's where they're going. Yeah, <laughs> they already have. So, yeah, so we know it's going there <laughs> yeah, first. Right. So it's your, it's your final day on Earth. And what, what's going to be your, your ultimate final meal? Meal. Okay. It would be fried green tomatoes, chicken and dumplings, and boiled okra. There's the Louisiana the southern girl in me. Yep. Going back to her roots. Yeah. Fried green tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Warden. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing everything. Thank you for the work you're, you're doing. And I am very impressed with your program, you know, telling patients about it. Very detailed. I'm uh, Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Well, we'll link all your things below in the show okay. notes. Um, I've been, I'm really I've, bad at those things, but I'm getting better at those things. Social well, media. I, that. I have to. Full, I've got a full page of notes. I'm going to tag all of this in the, in the YouTube all thing. Right, so great. hopefully we can just get all the, all the juicy uh, tidbits to get the most. Sounds great. So you guys can help us out, help more people. Here's how you can help like this video. Uh, subscribe, share it. Um, that's how we can help more people. Um, that's what this is all about, is, is transforming the lives of as many people on this planet as we can with, with keto and optimal health. So uh, you can help us help other people too. So um, thanks for watching. That's all for now. Bye everyone. <laughs>